Eric Draper served as President George W. Bush's chief photographer for all eight years of his presidency. Draper photographed the president at the Oval Office and attending official functions, and also captured President Bush during more personal moments. During that time, Draper took nearly one million photos documenting the presidency. Former NMIF producer Matt Grubb sat down with Draper when he was promoting the release of his new book, Front Row Seat. Eric Draper is the only White House chief photographer uh, to work two terms with George W. Bush in your case. Um, welcome, first of all, thanks for Thank coming you. in. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we were just talking before we went on, um, great timing with the release of the book and the opening of the library, and, and you said that your trip back there um, was, like a, was like a reunion for you. It was, uh, with you know, friends and um, colleagues, uh, Actually, it was almost like this, uh, that show, This Is Your Life, because of, uh, you know, eight years of photographing uh, these, these people, uh, you know, from world leaders to the staff, seeing them almost every day, uh, and then seeing them all at once in Dallas was a great experience. I bet. Um, you said that you weren't quite sure when you, when you put your name in for the job um, what to expect, and, and you did a little bit of research, and, and people said, go for it. Yeah, um, you know, I saw this golden opportunity to pursue the position, and and I did some investigation because I really didn't think about the job until after the election back in 2000. So during the recount, which is why I ended up in the White House, I was calling around the country, talking to all my colleagues, you know, former photographers, or excuse me, former White House photographers, okay. um, current photographers in different cities just to find out if they heard if anyone was picked for the job and no one they said they didn't hear anything it was quiet it was like well i think i have a really good shot at this position and i decided to go for it um the uh the book first of all great title front row seat i mean because that's exactly what you had um the job how long does it take um before some of that awe wears off, or, or, or does it ever, you know, where you can sort of get past the, wow, I'm in the Oval Office, he's talking to, you know. The you know, it, it never did. Really? It never got old. Uh, every day I felt like it was such a, a privilege, such a b blessing to be in the position that I had, uh, not only to be, you know, to have that front row seat, but also to have uh, the ability to follow someone who allowed me into his life. For example, you know, the president, and Mrs. Bush, um, you know, a, as an official photographer, my job was to document everything that was on the schedule, everything public. But uh, the president trusted me and allowed me to photograph his life. To have, so now I have this full body of work that shows him not only as commander in chief, but as a, as a husband, as a dog owner, as a father, and, and as a son, for example. Uh, right. The whole Bush family, that aspect of the, of the job to document uh, that part was really uh, extraordinary. You have to kind of set set the awe aside at points and realize, like, okay, I have to get to work now. <laughs> He's, yeah, 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 and and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you know I just have to like pinch myself and say, okay, wake up, get back to work, <laughs> <laughs> because you realize just how special it, it is. Um, but then realizing that uh, that I had a job to do. Uh, and that I'm there to, to make pictures, and I'm, I'm there to record history and not miss anything. I want to take a look at, at one of the photos that's, uh, that's one of your favorites. My guess is this is in Crawford or somewhere right. close. When was this? Tell me about it. This was taken in August of 2001, and at the time the president uh, had just moved to the ranch, uh, so everything was new. Uh, it was a, you know, uh, midsummer, so it was really hot, but the president loved to get outside and he loved to drive his truck because it's the only place where he can drive his right. own car. <laughs> uh, and, and I really liked his picture because the, the expression on his face is, is all him. It's, 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 that's his personality. You know, he has a little twinkle in his eye. He's very proud of his ranch. He's giving a tour for friends in the, in the car. Okay. Uh, and then also, you can't really see it, but in the picture, Barney is sitting on his lap, his favorite uh, <laughs> Oh, companion. yeah, over by the side view mirror there. Right. So, uh, and, and with the aspect of the, the timing, um, sure. this is before 9-11, so I, I, I kind of see a, a bit of innocence in this picture as well. Okay. Um, you, are you looking for, for a shot, per se, you know, and with that photographer's eye, or are you aware that there are 
moments happening that really need to be need to be documented? It's a combination of everything. Okay. Um, I try to, uh, when, when there are times to be creative, I, I try to be creative just because that's my background uh, in photography and in photojournalism, but then also uh, having, to being able to tell a story with the images. And sometimes it means just making a record shot because um, I was basically the, creating the a visual record of the administration. So for example, a meeting which looked like just people sitting in a room uh, is important because it could be a historic meeting. Sure. You know, and so being able to go back, look at that image and see who was present in that meeting, what was happening, uh, that was part of my job. Okay. Uh, do you, the ones that you really liked, are those the ones that are, where the faces are capturing sort of the, the tenor of that meeting? Well, that, that, that's when, you know, my, my background as a documentary photographer kicks in where you know, I'm trying to capture moments that can tell a story. Okay. And a lot of times it could mean capturing emotion, capturing the mood at the time, uh, and, 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 that's, and, and that was definitely prevalent sure. <laughs> in this situation uh, where uh, almost every day the, the president could make history. Uh, and, and sometimes I knew what was happening and sometimes I didn't know until afterwards you know, what I photographed. So yeah. I couldn't really stop anyone and ask questions. <laughs> that wasn't my job. <laughs> Well, at least um, early on, and I know this is, this is taken after 9-11, this photo that we're looking at here, the, the 41-43 photo, um, but that, that was sort of a defining characteristic was, you know, for the first time in more than, well, more than a century, you know, we have a father-son um, right. alive at the same time in the, in the White House. Um, family must have been a, a big part of that. Well, and, and to the president, family is very important. Um, he always had his family around, um, his brothers, his, his sister, and his father would visit regularly. Uh, every holiday season, it'd either be spent at Camp David or at the ranch uh, for Christmas, for Easter, and his family was always there. But then for me, as a photographer telling a story, that was just a whole other universe to document the father-son relationship and the history there. Um, you know, the, only the second son of a president to become president, the first being uh, John Q. Adams. Uh, for example, there's a, an image I made uh, in the private dining room of, uh, adjacent to the Oval Office. Uh, the president's having lunch with his father and hanging between them is, is, is a large portrait of John Q. Adams because the president was very fond of him. And, sure. uh, and at the time he was reading uh, one of his uh, biographies. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, it was very uh, fascinating to, to uh, document that, that part. Uh, were they willing participants? Did it take a little bit of arm twisting to get them to do, you know, uh, a photo like this? Well, you know, um, what I learned in the White House is, I mean, the, the president has so little time, free time, uh, but I knew I really wanted to make this image. I really wanted both presidents to have a photo sitting for me. So I waited for the right time, uh, and this was around, I think just, this was a, uh, an Easter visit to Camp David. Okay. Uh, and they had some downtime, and so I set up a studio at Camp David, and I just had them walk in in the morning, and uh, and they were just you know just as chipper as ever, you know. Uh, they really enjoyed each other, uh, and had them sit for a portrait, and uh, they're all they're all for it. Just as long as you know the timing is timing is so important uh, in in knowing when to ask for things and when not to ask for things, and and for me like when to um, uh, push the envelope in terms of just how close I would get. Uh, to you know, taking pictures because following someone with a camera that closely for so long is is not normal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> but uh, so I really had to be very sensitive to the president's personal time, and to the privacy of his family because you know I was there um, to do a job, but I didn't want to intrude on his personal time. The um, the defining moment of the presidency had to be 9-11. Um, I know you're there in, uh, in Florida with him as well, um, but the, the photo that um, you give to us is this one. I'm assuming that's looking out on, on either the Pentagon or, or the World Trade Center site on 9-11. On 9-11, yes, 9-11, uh, obviously we started in Florida. Uh, we spent a lot of time on Air Force One. Uh, in this moment, this was uh, the final leg from uh, Nebraska to Washington, D.C. 
And as we approached, uh, everyone started seeing the uh, fighter jets escorting us. And apparently they had been with us all day. We just hadn't seen them. Okay. And they got really close to the wings of Air Force One as we approached. And everyone was just in awe of, of that. But, the, but just the sight of it and the fact that, you know, we're under attack. We have, you know, the military escort. And, and then so you, you can see the airplanes out of the left side of the plane. Out of the right side of the plane, you can still see the plume of smoke still rising from the Pentagon. So it really just felt like, like truly like a war, like yeah. as we approached Washington. The, that has to be a, an interesting moment for you as a newsman. Um, you know, chances are if you had a different job, you'd be running toward one of the, you know, one of the sites from 9-11. Right, right. Uh, also, um, there's a, an image here that, that I really like. Um, it, this is, is this a military hospital here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I believe this is Walter Reed Hospital. This soldier who was injured in, in Afghanistan um, just received the Purple Heart from the president. And the president reached over to kiss his forehead. And the president had a, a lot of compassion for the soldiers. Uh, he really wanted to look them in the eye and meet, his, meet their families. And, and he would explain why he made the decision to act uh, militarily in, in f for both wars. Um, and he felt very strongly to, to uh, tell them, you know, face to face when he had the opportunity, but also to honor them and, um, because of the, the, the huge sacrifice that a lot of the soldiers and the families have paid. Uh, and it's just a really tender moment. And, and this played out dozens and dozens of times through the years. The president would visit hospitals all over the country and any time he had the opportunity to visit with families of uh, the fallen soldiers or injured troops, he would do it. Did you see this kind of thing weigh on him in, in the private moments? You know, I think it gave him strength, to be honest, mm -hmm. to, to, to keep his focus. Um, I think, you know, he would spend moments with these families uh, laughing and crying with them, and, and, and it, he would come out stronger. He, he really, he, he was, he's a real people person and he would feed off of, uh, of, of the emotions of people, I believe. And, um, and I think, uh, I didn't see it wear on him. No. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's some funny pictures and, and by some accounts, he's, he's a funny guy. Um, <laughs> he has a great sense of humor. He yeah. really does. Uh, he, he, he would keep the staff laughing a lot. Uh, he always, his timing was perfect because he would always uh, use humor to lighten the mood in lots of really, but you know, uh, dark situations. Sure. Um, typically, the most positive person in the room, uh, and, and everyone would follow him, would, would would take his lead. And in this situation here, uh, this is inside Buckingham Palace, and the President and Mrs. Bush were guests of the Queen. And Buckingham Palace is like the White House, but bigger, as you can see, with the, <laughs> the couch. And they were like kids kind of walking around. They're like, oh, Eric, come you know, take our picture over here. And they're about, they're about to head out to dinner. And so they're just, you know, having fun. <laughs> That's great. Is, uh, it looks like the first lady there is giving him a stare. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. That's great. And then um, the dog owner. Um, right. That's great. Yeah, this is the president with uh, Miss Beasley. Uh, he had... Two Scottish Terriers, Barney, of course, probably the most famous yeah, yeah. Scottish Terrier. And Beasley came a few years later. She was a puppy at this time. And, um, and these moments within the, the formality and the protocol happen seconds. And then the president would, would transition to another serious meeting or a social event or a media interview. It's amazing how quickly things would happen in one single day. So for example, this moment was over in 20, 30 seconds, and then a meeting started, you know, and, and he realized, you know, that the, he's just carved that, that, really, that really unique, um, you know, fun moment with the dog just, just to get a little breather. Yeah. And then, boom, he's back to being president again. Sure. That makes your day exhausting, I bet, <laughs> you know. It was fun, actually. Yeah. I mean, it made my day interesting. Sure. Just because there are so many different things that could happen in one single day. Right. And the camera always at your side, I'm sure. Right. Um, this is great. This is, is this him walking out of the, the Oval Office for the last time? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Uh, January 20th, 2009. So I was there eight years to the day earlier, um, watching him walk through the door for the first time. So I wanted to be there when he walked out and I had always imagined 
through the years what that day would be like. I thought it would be completely emotional, people crying and hugging and tears and everything, and uh, it was nothing of the sort. Really? <laughs> All that happened was it was about 8 o'clock in the morning. The president made a couple of calls. I think the chief of staff was walking around with him a little bit, and he called for his coat from his uh, secretary sitting outside the uh, Oval Office, and he put his coat on, turned, walked out the door without looking back. Did he, he didn't say anything to you? Or? Didn't say anything. Wow. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know what? You know, that's, uh, he hasn't changed. You know, that's, 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 you know he's very, very direct. And, uh, and, uh, and that, that picture illustrates, uh, that moment illustrates that. That's great. Well, Eric, it's a, it's a great bro book, Front Row Seat. Um, interesting, uh, certainly about a man, but also about the impact of that office on the man, you know, and then the various things that weigh on him and the times that he finds to steal away and, and be himself. It's, uh, it's great. So thanks very much. Thank you. Absolutely.